Hidden in the depths of a murky forest in Scotland, a spooky folktale clings to the thick, mossy tree trunks as it lures unknowing victims into the world of the supernatural legend. As you walk farther into an ancient forest in Aviemore, the trees envelop and trap you while leading you to a historic graveyard where ghosts lurk. Waiting for an unsuspecting traveler to stumble on the cursed grave of the great Shaw, Seth Moore. This is Everything is Spooky in the Dark, the podcast for WanderingCrystal.com. As you wander through the historic graveyards scattered across Scotland, you will come across several different types of graves. Gravestones that are covered in detailed symbols like skulls, angels, and carvings, or statues of the person buried below. However, lingering between the moss-covered gravestones and weathered mausoleums, you will find graves covered by iron cages. Have you ever wondered why someone would cover a grave in an iron cage? Was it to keep people from getting into the grave? or to keep someone inside the tomb from escaping. In Scotland, iron cages that cover graves are known as mort safes. These cages prevented body snatchers from stealing bodies from fresh graves. The first mort safes started to show up in Scottish graveyards in 1816 to act as a deterrent to the ever-prevalent resurrection men. So essentially, these cages stopped grave robbers from digging up the corpses below to sell to the local medical schools for dissection. Now, keeping the bodies of your loved ones safe was the most common reason that graves were covered by iron cages. But there is one grave tucked away in the Rothy Murchis Forest where the body and scary spirit of Clan Chief Seth Moore resides. And the mort safe is there to keep us safe from him. Seth Moore, who is also known as the Great Shaw, which not only makes him sound like a magician, which I'm into, but it's way easier to pronounce uh, as his real name is Scottish Gaelic, which is not a language that I can speak. So I will refer to him as the Great Shaw, just in case I'm mispronouncing his name. People who speak Gaelic won't die inside. The Great Shaw was an esteemed soldier, but an intimidating man in his life. He was known for having a crooked smile as he towered over other people with his great height. He was the chief of Clan Shaw, and during the Battle of the Clans, he was the only man to survive. This was an incredible feat, even mentioned on his gravestone, which reads, Victor in the Combat at Perth in 1396. The Great Shaw passed away in 1405, but his spirit has never left. His grave, which is topped with five stones, is cursed. Sightings of ghosts and the spirits of elves can be found deep within the forest in the Scottish Highlands guarding his grave. It is said that anyone who passes by his grave will meet his spirit. So the Great Shaw will challenge you to battle. How you react to his request will determine your fate. If you accept the challenge, his spirit disappears and you can continue on your journey. But if you show any fear or try to escape, you will never be seen again. However, he isn't the only spirit who lives in the forest. One other spirit that you need to watch out for is Bodach Adun, an elf-like spirit with a rotten temper. This ghostly apparition is known for being the guardian spirit of the grave. So if iron cages didn't appear in Scotland until the 1800s, why would the grave of Seth Moore be encased in iron? Well, the mort safe that now covers his grave wasn't put up until long after the threat of grave robbing was over. In fact, his grave was left uncovered until 1983. So why was it covered long after his death? Well, it just so happens that on his grave sit five stones that wreak havoc on the lives of the people who touch them. The first victim, a footman in the 1800s, removed all five stones and dumped them into the river Spey. A few days later, the stones returned to their place on top of Seth's grave, and the person who was said to have removed them was found dead nearby. Other people who touched the stones include a journalist who knew the legend of the Great Shaw, 
and decided he wanted to prove the story was just a tall tale. So in the 1940s, he lifted the stones over his head and was killed in a car crash the very same day. The next victims didn't appear again until 1978, when a man named Leslie Walker touched the stones and fell ill for six weeks. While he was in the hospital, his other friend, who decided to rearrange the stones, died in the cemetery the very next day. And the last known case of death or illness associated with the stones on the grave of the Great Shaw happened in 1982, when the stones went missing for a couple of weeks. Once again, the stones were thrown into the river and returned weeks later to their rightful place on top of the grave. So in 1983, the metal cage was placed over the Great Shaw's tomb so that the stones could never be removed again. As of today, nearly 40 years later, the stones have gone untouched. But be aware that the spirit of the Great Shaw may still pop out and challenge you to battle if you get too close to his grave. Will you try and visit his grave? What would you do if you met up with the ghost of Seth Moore? And if you got the chance, would you touch or move the stones that lay on top of his grave? Or is the folklore and real-life coincidences enough to keep you away?